Hi team and welcome back to the channel. A lot has changed since the last video. We're back in London. I've aged an entire year and I've grown a beard. Important stuff. As I'm recording this, London is about to go into lockdown again, but hopefully there's a vaccine on the way. So 2021 will return to some sort of normality. Fingers crossed. Whilst we were able to travel and enjoy some sort of freedom, Katie and I went to Marlow to visit a new gallery by Nova Fine Art, who have represented me for the last year since opening their first gallery in Leamington Spa at the end of 2019. The plan was to go and see the new gallery and film a little vlog to show you guys the incredible artwork there and introduce to the team. That was the plan. Unfortunately, someone, who shall remain nameless, forgot to turn the camera off after first using it and the battery ran out. This YouTube thing is going really well. So this is as much as we managed to film from the vlog. Yes, this is Barnaby sleeping. This is some audio with the camera lens still on the camera. And this is inside the gallery. So there you have it, our first vlog, really top-notch stuff. But don't worry, I'm sure we'll be back to Marlow in the future and we'll do a Marlow vlog take two and hopefully actually record something. So, what have we learned from this? Number one, turn the camera off after using it. Number two, buy a spare battery. Number three, buy a spare spare battery. Number four, we really are YouTube novices. And number five, Marlow really is lovely and you should go and visit it for yourself and see the new No Fine Art Gallery. To make amends for this spectacular balls up, the following message has been recorded. Hello everybody, just to say, sorry I left the camera on and it ran out of battery. What a shocker. I mean, to be honest, I've never been taught how to use the camera, so what can I say? Sorry. So, instead of a vlog, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about the collection of work that Nova have, which is a collection of the paintings I did from last year and tell you about the process I used to create them. These colourful figurative paintings are perhaps the style of painting that I'm best known for and I've been painting this way for more or less six years now. The techniques I use to paint like this have evolved over time and I've never really gone into detail before about how I actually do it. So hopefully you'll find this insightful and if you do, please smash that like button and comment below. First, let's talk a little bit about these figurative paintings and some of the concepts and ideas behind them that I'm thinking about when creating them. Firstly, I should say that I'm not concerned about creating a perfect likeness to the subject matter. This is much more about creating an emotional response to the figure. The way I think about it is, instead of trying to capture someone sitting in front of me, instead, what I'm painting is the memory of that person. When we remember something, what we're actually doing is remembering the last time we remembered it, which is weird, right? But what this means is over time our memories change. The original is overlaid with a near copy time and time again. We paint our own picture of how things looked or happened. Some details are intensified, others drift away. The imperfection of those memories add to their beauty as we forget what we don't want to see, the good or the bad. We have all, at some point in our lives, faced relationships with people that have reached a moment of decision. A moment that will change the way we see that person forever, or possibly if we'll ever see that person again. This relationship could be a romantic, or it could be a friendship. It could even be someone in your family. But you know that you've reached a point that from this point on, for better or worse, everything will change. It might come from a conversation where you confront it, or perhaps something that hasn't been said. Maybe it's just a moment of realisation that the way you thought of that person will never be the same again. The way we think back to these moments, knowing that everything is about to change, these are the figures that I'm painting. The ever-changing memory of that person, both more vivid than ever, but also gently slipping away from us, is the reality that I'm capturing on the canvas. There are elements of nostalgia or even melancholy for these events that we have idolised in our memory. I try to depict them with a sense of questioning. As they stay with us, they continue to ask, was the right decision made? Whatever the outcome of the relationships, the person we thought we knew before is lost to us. A potential future, for better or worse, is gone. Like all art, this is just what I see. These are the thoughts and the concepts that are going along in my head when I'm creating these paintings and the emotions that I'm trying to convey. But once it's made, it no longer belongs to me. What you see is equally justified. So let me know in the comments below, how do these paintings make you feel? What do you see? What do you think about when you look at them? So I want to talk to you a little bit about how I go about creating these paintings. And very conveniently, 
I'm in the middle of doing a painting. How convenient. So this is a process of layering colour and letting accidents and the unexpected happen on the canvas. So I start out by sketching out the figure onto the canvas and when I'm happy with it, I will go over the lines with a mixture of black oil paint and liquid. I put that on the edge of a palette knife and will score the lines to create a sort of gel-like texture on top of the canvas. Liquid is a drying agent, which obviously just means the oil paint is going to dry much faster and you can paint over it much quicker. But it also means that the oil paint acts more as a gel and when applying it, it creates these ridges which later catches the paint that goes over the top, which creates a texture within the painting. Then I mix bright oil colours with paint thinner. I use white spirit, but any will do. I then fill the canvas with big brush strokes of colour and let the paint run down in drips. I try to leave some of these drips visible all the way through the painting, creating that idea of a memory that's slowly being lost to us. From this point on, it becomes a process of building layers of colour. And I use these uh, tools, which I, they're called colour shapers. I don't really know what they're used for, but I found them in a shop in France ages ago and I've started using them ever since. This painting is in the stage now of building those layers of colour. I use the colour shapers to put oil paint onto this and then smear it onto the canvas. <laughs> this is like painting with Dave. Depending how much liquid I use, depends how transparent the layer is. And as I get towards the end, usually I become more and more transparent, more vibrant with the colors. Slowly the layers form and you'll get color that merges together and contrasts and complements one another. And then as it gets to that stage, I'll concentrate more on the finer details with a paintbrush to tidy it up and bring that painting closer together. The paintings will usually be constructed to have geometric shapes that lead the viewer's gaze in towards the eyes of the figure in the painting. I also try to break the lines which become too structural to again reflect the idea of a fractured memory. I then finish the piece with splats of painting which I literally just flip from my fingers onto the canvas. And again, that is adding to this idea of imperfection and instability in that form that's created. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully in the future I will manage to record more of that process of painting so that you can see it firsthand rather than me just talk about it. But I hope you found this useful to an extent. Let me know in the comments below if there's any areas in particular you'd like to know a little bit more about or if you have any questions about my process and I'll make sure I come back to you there. All the paintings that I've been showing in this video are from last year and they're all in the collection with Nova Fine Art. So if you are interested in any of them, get in touch with me or with Nova and we'll help you out. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found it insightful. I will see you all next week.